All right, guys, so these sneaky, sneaky, sneaky Democrats and these so-called bipartisan GOP senators um, have come together to agree on this $1.2 trillion infrastructure infrastructure package, right? This infrastructure package is supposed to help repair our vital infrastructure system, for example, like airports, roads, and bridges, okay? This is supposed to be bipartisan because support for this is supposed to be bipartisan um and biden in order to pay for this right he he claims that he's not gonna raise taxes on the middle class he's not gonna raise taxes on anybody making less than four hundred thousand dollars a year right and guys i've been telling you for the longest time that is a lie there's no way there's no way you can spend trillions of dollars right 1.2 trillion exactly for this one and i think what like 3.2 trillion more for the uh fake infrastructure package that the democrats want to do through reconciliation there's no way you're spending four to five trillion dollars in federal spending without raising taxes okay democrats historically tax and spend republicans historically uh, they don't tax but they spend okay they almost never cut which is a solid criticism of the GOP, okay? Because they claim to be the party of fiscal responsibility. But I, I, the data is just not showing it, right? The data just don't show it, okay? I'm sorry, I gotta keep it 100, right? But I do appreciate the tax cuts, right, from the GOP. But what I don't appreciate from the GOP is the excessive spending. But it looks like this time around, uh, the GOP is being like the sneaky Democrats, the establishment quote-unquote bipartisan GOP may be on board with a Democrats tax and spend strategy in the sneakiest way possible as the 1.2 trillion dollar infrastructure infrastructure package apparently is floating a national mileage fee despite Biden's claim that he doesn't want to raise taxes on people uh making less than four hundred thousand dollars a year matter of fact he said he will not do that right he said that's a red line i will not raise taxes on the middle class that's what he says however um that's not what's in the text of the bill here in terms of what could possibly happen in the future and they're trying to do it in the sneakiest way possible and we all know guys that a national mileage fee right would basically be raising taxes on everybody especially those in the transportation industry those who drive long distances to work rural workers those people are going to get hit the hardest okay they're the people going to get hit the hardest and that's just not the only thing they're trying to do in order to tax the middle class because i'm telling you they're going to find a way to do it they're also coming out the cryptocurrency right they're coming out the crypto we're going to read about that later but let's read about this infrastructure package first the 1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure accord would institute a multi-year national motor vehicle per mile user fee pilot program that without future intervention from the white house could potentially violate one of president joe biden's previously stated red lines top white house officials emphatically stated for months that paying for the infrastructure investments by indexing gas taxes to inflation or instituting new electric vehicle mileage fees were hard red lines for the president on the grounds that they would raise taxes on people earning less than four hundred thousand per year yet the new per mile user fee pilot outlined in section 13002 of the bill does leave those people open to tax vulnerabilities pegged to personal vehicle mileage transportation uh, secretary pete Buttigieg and treasury secretary janet yellen are directed to provide recommendations to congress three years into the pilot's life cycle at which time congress could choose to pass new legislation implementing national per mile fees fully as an established funding source for infrastructure improvements still white house officials disputed the idea that the inclusion of the pilot program in the infrastructure bill guarantees the establishment of a future nationalized uh mileage uh, fee and suggested that depending on how Buttigieg and uh yellow's recommendations shake out the white house could oppose legislation implementing the tax okay so understand what's going on here right <laughs> understand how sneaky the democrats are being they're saying well we're not technically implementing a mileage fee right we're not technically implementing that what we're doing is we're running a pilot we're running a pilot program that again if you actually read the details and the rest of this article i'm not going to go through the whole article 
it, it's you you get reimbursed right volunteers sign up you're gonna get reimbursed okay and they're gonna use the data from this pilot program to basically determine if it's right to implement a um, mileage fee right now this happens to be again three years into the program so basically this is something that will probably start next year in 2022 lo and behold right it will probably end in 2025 okay so so guess what if biden uh wins in 2024 what happens is is that he now has the option to extend that right in his second term in which he's not running for president anymore so they may be able to afford the political hit of basically implementing this mileage fee to pay for this infrastructure package okay they may better do that but if a republican wins and republicans are left with the um task of figuring out whether or not they want to implement this fee or not uh basically what happens is that it's a lose-lose situation because if they do choose to implement the fee obviously they're going to piss off the base if they don't then people are going to say well look at the gop not choosing to pay for infrastructure right they're running up the deficit because they don't want to pay for the infrastructure right that's what's going on here right in, in my opinion in my opinion Quote, there's literally nothing in the bill that is counter to the president's pledge. This refers to two provisions about research. One gives grants to states if they want to apply to do their own research. The second involves a federal pilot plan based off individual volunteers who receive uh, full refunds for studies that would then only be the basis for recommendations about future legislation. One White House official uh, elaborated. The administration will evaluate all legislation, including any bills relevant to these pilot programs against the $400,000 pledge. So, yeah, um, like I told you guys, it it's a pilot program in which they're going to reimburse people who actually participate, and then they're going to use the recommendations and data to determine whether or not they want to implement the fee, right? And that's essentially uh, what's going on here. So, they're, so they're, they're definitely going to do it. They're just going to push it down the road just to say, well, technically, we fulfilled our promise. I didn't raise taxes on people making $400,000 or less, but hey, I may or may not do it in my second term. And I may or may not be trying to put Republicans in a bad situation if they win in 2024. That's essentially what's going on uh, here. Now, the second part of this bill, in which people can say that <laughs> they're definitely um, trying to tax the middle class here, is cryptocurrency transactions, right? Uh, we all know that the Biden administration has floated the idea of trying to uh, create more transparency around crypto transactions, right, for the government to monitor, and also more funding for the IRS, uh, in regards to trying to collect tax payments, right? And for more audits and stuff like that. Now, I think that idea with IRS, I think that's a, a, a bit of non-start. I think the GOP has shot that down, okay? Um, however, the cryptocurrency, uh, trying to tax cryptocurrency more is still on the table. So let's read a little bit more about this. A key senator negotiating the roughly $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill signal a willingness to compromise over a provision that seeks to raise money through tougher tax enforcement of cryptocurrency transactions. Senator Rob Portman, a Republican Ohio, on Thursday said he agreed on the need to clarify the provision, which he wrote in its back by the Biden administration. It aims to require brokers of digital assets to report on gains reaped on trading to the Internal Revenue Service. As crafted, it would raise an estimate of $28 billion over a decade to help pay for the improved roads uh, bridges ports and other infrastructure the amount raised by the provision while relatively small signals the latest move by washington policymakers to impose oversight over an industry that has grown dramatically without regulation the cryptocurrency industry uh says the provision is overly broad and could inadvertently encompass uh, bitcoin miners and other entities and discourage innovation in the fast growing sector the significance of cryptocurrency profits as a revenue source may also grow after the uh, Congressional Budget Office found on Thursday that the infrastructure bill would widen the federal budget, budget deficit by $256 billion over 10 years, uh, contradicting negotiators' claims that the cost of legislation would be covered by new revenue and saving measures. Okay, so basically, um, they haven't figured out how to pay for this, Right. They have to figure out how to really pay for it, okay? And, and it's going to require deficit spending. It's going to cost us money. We're going to have to borrow money to pay for this. So in order to try to uh, lessen that deficit, they're trying to implement uh, 
taxes on the middle class in the, in the sneakiest way possible, right? Whether that's through the mileage fee, right, that we just talked about, or through crypto. These are things and taxes that will affect the middle class. So this goes directly against the promise that the Biden administration made in regards to them saying that we're not going to raise taxes on uh, people making less than $400,000 a year. Now, he can keep that promise right on paper by saying, well, you know, we didn't raise tax rates, right? By not raising tax rates, marginal tax rates. But um, on the other hand, okay, you don't have to necessarily raise tax rates to still collect tax revenue. You can do all kinds of things, okay, in order to collect more taxes, right? To effectively raise taxes on people without necessarily doing it through raising marginal tax rates. And, and that's what's going on with the Democrats right now. Because they know that uh, deficit spending is unpopular. They know that uh, our country, right, is in uh, trillions of dollars of debt, okay? Debt that we don't have any plan of paying for whatsoever. And the deficit continues to get larger and larger every single year. And the Biden administration and the Democrats don't really seem to care, right? They don't really seem to care. They don't give a damn, right? But they do understand that the American people care. So they're basically trying to formulate a way to say on paper that, well, the infrastructure bill is paid for and we didn't raise your taxes. And we also didn't cut spending as if math works that way. Math does not work that way, right? You cannot not cut spending. You cannot not raise taxes and say, well, uh, this new spending is going to be paid for. That's not possible. Taxes have to be raised somewhere and on somebody. Or they're going to have to cut spending somewhere or from some program. But we, we know they don't really want to do that. And then the third option, I guess, is, well, new spending is going to save us X amount, right? That That's like an, a, an investment um, argument, okay? And, you know, listen, that is the least reliable way to raise money is to say, well, this is going to save us X amount over this period of time. It's all estimates, okay? That's, that's all an estimate. And the, most of the money that they're going to want to extract is going to be from the middle class because the middle class always gets screwed over by the politicians, Right? You think rich people are buying these politicians for these politicians to turn around and tax them? No, <laughs> obviously not. <laughs> okay, the, the politicians are going to tax the middle class instead. That's what they're going to do. It is what it is. Okay, and, and, and that's what you're seeing happening here. So we'll see what happens, right? This provision will probably end up being in there since it's not necessarily a um, hard thing that they're putting in here. It's a pilot with the option to extend later on after they collect data. And that's in regards to the uh, national mileage fee, right? I, I think that they're definitely going to implement that pilot for sure. Um, and when it comes to the crypto stuff, yeah, I, I think they're going to try to, uh, at the very least, try to create more transparency around the capital gains that are being generated through uh, buying and selling cryptocurrency. So we'll see what happens. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.